With DLSS 4.5, it's got some new and improved models. The NVIDIA app lets you override game settings so that you can use these newer models, replacing the older ones which were included at the time. Or you can use older models if you do so wish. I will compare a bunch of them in this video. DLSS upscaling is getting complicated. We started with DLSS 1, which was in games like Battlefield 5, and it sucked ass. So much so that AMD just invented FSR to counter it, which was essentially an edge smoothing tool with a bit of sharpening. Nvidia then created NIS, which was pretty similar to FSR, which looked similar to DLSS 1. Got that? Good. But then Control rolled out what I'm going to call DLSS 1.9, which was significantly improved. And that's really when the world woke up to just how powerful upscaling could potentially be. I thought it was a miracle technology at the time, but it was still just using normal graphics card cores to do it. But then, for DLSS 2, Nvidia finally moved their upscaling over to their neurally AIE tensor cores. And that was probably the point where AMD shat themselves, realising that their FSR alternative wasn't going to cut it anymore. And so, looking on the NVIDIA app, even this earliest Model A variant of DLSS is still some variant of DLSS 2, so it's already quite good. But these models should hopefully get better as they go along, but it isn't that simple, because some of them are more optimised for different amounts of upscaling. Model F, for instance, is optimised for ultra-performance upscaling, where it makes 9 pixels from every one, whereas Model E is better designed for performance mode, which makes 4 pixels from every one. All of these model letters are the old CNN style of upscaling, whereas from J onwards they move to the Transformer model, which is super sophisticated, graphically superior, but will slow down older generations of RTX cards more significantly. Straight off, let's compare oldest to newest. On the top is Preset A, and on the bottom, the newest Transformer-based Preset M. And if you ask me, even Preset A looks pretty good here. I decided to test 1080p performance mode, because YouTube isn't the greatest for these sorts of comparisons, so having such a low resolution should at least make the differences more obvious. And there are some, but to make them more obvious, I'm going to have to slow this footage down more and zoom in further. In fact, screw it. Let's just do a still comparison, and the newest Model M is much sharper across the whole board. Sharpness on its own doesn't mean more detailed, but zooming into details like the Brosif barrel, I think everyone would agree that how Model M does it makes it look better. Same with the newspaper on the floor. It just looks like it's a higher resolution, and without coming with any extra artefacts that you might expect from extra sharpening. So the upscaling must be better. And further proof of this comes from the exit sign, which is now a lot more readable, which is very important if there's a fire. And also, whatever the hell these hanging down things are, are in focus with Model M, and out of focus with A. On the door, the old Model A shows obvious dots or lines going across it, which comes from the lower resolution it's trying to upscale from, whereas Model M almost completely eradicates this artefact. In short, Model M does a far better job of faking a higher resolution than it's actually rendering at. You're not supposed to use really aggressive forms of upscaling like performance mode when you're only gaming at 1080p resolution, but with how good these Transformer models are becoming, it might even be getting to the point where you can get away with using it here. I don't want to pixel peep too much, so other things I want to note from this run are the big pixelated looking clouds and smoke effects, which as far as I can tell look distractingly pixelated no matter which version of DLSS you use. A product of upscaling that science is yet to remedy, but who knows what DLSS 5 will bring. And the big distracting problem with older versions of DLSS tended to be these trailing grainy lines behind moving objects, which you can clearly see here behind the palm tree trunks just here for Model A which with the new Model M, it completely removes, showing the increased intelligence of the Transformer-based models. Nvidia tends to show them doing a better job with particle effects, which again, the older models do a bad job of, either making them look trailey or just doing away with them entirely. You thought that comparison was fun? Well, now I'm going to do it again, this time using Model B against Model L, being the oldest and newest models optimised for ultra-performance upscaling. This is where the upscaler tries to make 9 pixels from every one it's rendering. This is rather challenging, and was intended to be used at high resolutions like 4K and 8K, not 1080p, which is what I'm doing here. So this is a real challenge for them to render the scene convincingly. Again, I don't want to get too bogged down with all the details, but fortunately, there aren't many details to get bogged down by here. Model B makes the wall covered in writing B rubbish, and once the mesh goes in front of it, the writing really is on the wall for the older model, which really can no longer manage the writing on the wall. And the neon signs are a mess too. 
It's not like you should expect great results here, yet the Transformer model comes out on top by a wide margin. Even after this mesh bit, check out how clear the writing is using Model L. The old model is just JPEGged up in comparison, you can't read the writing at all. And look at the bottles on the table, you can see ghosting behind them using Model B. But again, Model L takes it all in its stride. Look at how shimmery and unstable the old model is on the details in the distant bar. This new model isn't like that at all. You can even read the spunky monkey sign and it just looks more like a video rather than a series of flashing pictures. So what are the limitations with this new model? Well if we go nearer to the end of this scene, you can see it's still flickering a bit around the edges of fine lines on the palm trees. But remember this sort of upscaling was never designed with 1080p in mind. The fact that it's edging it towards the realm of feasibility is a small miracle and it's no longer an unpleasantly shimmery, horrible experience. Hopefully you're never in a situation where you have to use ultra performance upscaling at 1080p, but there might come a time, sometime in the future, when you might not mind having to, provided upscaling becomes good enough. So that's a leap from DLSS 2 to DLSS 4.5, but what does the leap from 4 to 4.5 look like? This. I was expecting the transition from transformer to transformer upscaler to be minor, yet I was shocked to notice so many meaningful differences. Shocked, I tell you. And that's just when previewing this video in my editing program. 4.5 is noticeably sharper across the scene and more stable, like how you can read Spunky Monkey. How much better can it get beyond this point? Will they introduce an ultra, ultra performance mode where it's rendering at like 240p with still excellent results? Some of this might be a product of Preset K being a first attempt at transformer-based upscaling, so maybe it was a bit rough around the edges despite being built on much better foundations. Now let's compare the two Transformer models in performance mode. And I found the differences here harder to spot, given that there are random smoke spots every run, which makes it harder to compare like for like. I would put this down to Transform being powerful enough to make four pixels from every one pretty well already, so we only really see the improvements when we drop down further to Ultra Performance mode, where there is still significant progress to be made. I haven't really touched on frame rates until now, but the new 4.5 models are meant to run slower on every graphics card, so it might be worth sticking to the older DLSS 4 model if you're running it in performance mode, and then only switching over to the newer 4.5 model if you're going to be using Ultra Performance mode, where it can still yield significant improvements over older models. But even at performance mode, I felt like the newest model made the bottles at the bar appear to flicker more, I think. Is that a bug? Or is that how it's meant to be? To find out, the latest DLSS performance model versus downscaled 4K DLAA footage to get a ground truth for how things are meant to look. And I think the latest model does a great job of holding up to how it's meant to, despite me comparing 540p against full 4K here, which will look right just by brute forcing lots and lots and lots of pixels. DLSS makes it maybe a bit brighter and more contrasty, and the bottles at the bar are doing something weird. They all seem to imitate each other's reflections in a way that the 4K version does not. So I'm not quite sure what's going on there. Maybe the lower resolution is playing a part in some way, but who knows. So maybe there is still some way for upscaling to go before it can fully replicate a perfect image. But you know the one big difference between these two? The frame rate. That's right, rather than nitpicking visual differences between the two, just bear in mind that one is running four times faster than the other, and even then it's probably just CPU limited. In conclusion, these new models look beautiful and are visually superior to older models, but whether they're worth the extra performance impact they come with, and by performance there I mean frame rate, not the name of the upscaling setting, remains to be seen. And now, the final challenge. How do these models fare with full path tracing? On the left, the oldest preset, on the right, the newest using ultra performance upscaling to try and make sense of full path tracing. Wait a second, Philip. You're telling us this whole video up till now has been done without ray tracing on? Why would you do that? Surely that was the whole point of DLSS existing in the first place, in order to make ray tracing actually run feasibly fast in games. And you're right. Problem is, DLSS 4.5 doesn't currently work with ray reconstruction, aka a component of DLSS 3.5. Without it, you can see the shimmery mess on these shiny surfaces here. Ray reconstruction helped to calm this sort of effect down and to make path trace information on thin and awkward surfaces appear more consistent over time. Without it, even DLSS 4.5 suffers from distracting artifacts that complicate this analysis. 
but if you try to turn road reconstruction on then it overrides DLSS, which is a bit of a problem with this sort of testing. I just don't feel like DLSS 4.5 is truly finished just yet, we're not seeing it at its full power, so with this video I have instead tried to focus on the aspects of it that are done because otherwise there are too many variables to factor in, without the fear of another option overriding the aspects that I'm trying to compare. But you bet, in ray traced and path traced situations, these are where the true benefits of the new transformer models will really come into their own, in trying to clear up a low res, smeary, mushy, dotty, spotty, path traced mess. Let's just stop and see how far we've come. Back in 2019, nobody believed in DLSS upscaling. It was mocked, and when FSR's sharpening filter came onto the scene, even experts like Hardware Unboxed proudly declared that DLSS was dead, stating that sharpening filters were the future. Admittedly, it looks as though they've since added DLSS 1.0 to the title to try and disguise this, but I think it's pretty clear that people back then didn't believe in the technology, and that in the years since it has revolutionised the scene. And DLSS 4.5 is but the latest version, and I doubt it will be the last. So until Ray Reconstruction supports this latest version, stay cool, be fresh, and smash that sub button.